Hello, 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 and welcome to our newest episode of Pop Culture Therapy. I'm Karelica Kane. Hello, everybody. It's Advent Nebula here. And today we're here to talk about Warner Brothers. And their controversies they've had with two of their stars. So, we're going to go through the easy picking first before we go through the more complex and frightening one of the two. And we'll start with Amber Heard. Actually, oh. Amber Heard slash Johnny Depp, because both of them are yeah. a part of Warner Brothers to an extent. It's that with, because Johnny got dropped from Fantastic Beasts because of the whole debacle, and Amber Heard now, we don't know. We'll have to find out when the trailer actually drops for Aquaman if she's actually in the movie or not at this point. So, if for some reason, and I'd be amazed if this is the case for any of you, that your head is completely in the sand, you don't watch YouTube or see any random videos pop up. Or how you avoided five and a half weeks of uh, court TV clips. Oh, uh, God, yeah. Um, or, depending on your workplace where people talked about it, you couldn't escape the trial of Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp. And the memes. You could not escape the memes on Twitter or Facebook. Even I was guilty of sharing some of them. Oh, so was Kaiju. Both of you trolls, extraordinaires, decided to share it. But, so, in this court case, a very simplified version of what had happened is that... Amber Heard accused Johnny Depp of being physically abusive against her. Johnny Depp accused Amber Heard of being physically abusive against him. And also he sued her for defamation of character. Because of a scathing, scathing article that she had wrote. In the UK, which in the UK, when he's tried to sue there, they found him... How to say this? Basically, he was guilty of libel, and Amber Heard won. He brought it back to the States here to sue for defamation of character, and that was the major part of the suit here. And so what really happened during it is, one, you got to learn all of their dirty laundry as human beings. And both of them didn't come out looking that good. No. And, and, and if you, for some reason, even me, who's been a huge fan of Johnny Depp since Crybaby, which is an old, old movie, which is super good. I say old, but it's from the 90s, but to a lot of... I thought Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, shut up. Oh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, the 80s. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> yes, that was my first movie that I saw him in. But the first movie where he starred, where he was, like, really starting outside of 21 Jump Street and shit like that, was Crybaby with Ricky Lake. And, um... So, if you didn't know even back then, because obviously Nightmare on Elm Street, he seemed normal. So, you have him coming out and being like, yeah, I did a ton of drugs. And anybody who saw this and was surprised... You have been living in a cave. Uh, yes! I think many of us could tell he was doing drugs just by hearing his voice. And even he admitted that he used to hang out with Marilyn Manson, who he doesn't hang out with anymore, who has his own uh, deck of cards that we could talk about at a later time. Oh, yes, yes. So Amber Heard basically was saying he was so mean, he was so abusive, and one, she's a terrible actress. And she was, and the judge, you could tell during the trial was like, honey, Stop lying. You can see it in the judge's face. Especially when there was a recording of her specifically saying, I didn't punch you, Johnny. I hit you. I'm sorry. Hitting and punching are technically the same thing. Yes, punching is a little bit more of a forceful hit. But essentially, if you hit somebody, it's still a tend to... And the biggest lie she got in was the fact that... She did cut off part of his finger, and the doctor that had to sew it on testified in Johnny Depp's favor during this trial, so... Oh, so many people did. But neither here nor there, Johnny Depp... They both were found guilty of having to pay each other money, but Hammer but... Heard came out as the pretty much the aggressor of the whole thing. Correct, yes. And so, that's the long and short of it. 
we're not here to really talk about the court case because that's that's done it's over with what we want to talk about is basically Warner Brothers' new CEO and how he's going to have to clean up this mess and a few others. Because Warner Brothers, after what happened in the UK, especially with the article, it really started with the article and then extended with that court case that happened in the UK. Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp's career is was tanked, and honestly, I still don't think. It's going to be fixable. Now, Disney says they'll be willing to renegotiate with bringing him back, but that's going to be probably Jerry Brockheimer is probably the only reason why. Exactly. But, so, with that, Warner Brothers made the executive decision to take him out of the movie as Grindelwald and replace him with Mads Mikkelsen. And then they decided that instead of continuing the story to make the most recent Fantastic Beasts movie a wrap-up of the entire story, basically. And so the concern there is he was not actually found guilty, even in the UK, of being an abuser. He was only found guilty of libel. But because of the fact that they used the article as a basis within the court case of her scathingly calling him out, basically everybody was like, all right, I can't touch this. They just backed away, and it's kind of hypocritical in a way, because the one thing that not just Hollywood, but everybody in the world is believer of is that men cannot be physically abused, which is categorically false. I have met men who have been physically abused by their partners, which, and when I say partners, more so the female side than the male side. Because women can be abusers, they can be aggressors, and it's all about how you were raised. Because men were always raised not to hit women. I think you were probably told that since you were like, what, three? Yeah. So it's a common philosophy that you do not hit girls. So when a woman attacks you, are you going to hit them back? Not with the risk of the way our law is written with domestic violence. So you're going to basically, like move their arms, and get yourself out of the situation. That's typically how men get into that abused relationship because they are programmed because of our society not to hit girls, so... And usually it's not just physical, but more it's a mental abuse that mm -hmm. men end up suffering. Absolutely, and the mental really goes into the physical because women feel like that, the women, female abusers more so, then feel like they're winning so they can take advantage in more and more ways. But, so you have that situation there where you essentially could have a victim and it's he said, she said, so, but there is recording saying that Amber Heard was guilty. But was it justified, in your opinion, for them, even with no proof outside of an article, to do that to him, in your opinion? No, it was not. And also, you got to look at it, too, when the article came out, it was coming out, out after the heels of the Harvey Weinstein incident as well. So the timing ended up being in Amber Heard's favor at the time when the article dropped in late 2017. And the challenge is, which many actors or actresses, because many of them have been accused, it's hard to fight against that type of accusation because you are not there, well, they're in that position of power. So if they basically say, oh, no, that's not true, that's not true, it was consensual or what have you, who are they going to believe generally, the victim or the celebrity? They're going to blame the uh, believe the victim, especially because of what had happened. Just we just have to go back to the time frame of when this first came out of late 2017. What when we had really the infancy of the Me Too movement, and Me Too movement. Well, obviously it was really escalated by Harvey Weinstein. But there were so many people during that time who felt empowered, both male and female, to say, this happened to me. And then I, Kevin Spacey's career went downhill in, 
<laughs> not long after. And justifiably so. But, so you have that. And now we have come 2022. We now have a court case that's finding in the court of public opinion that Amber Hurt is the aggressor and the abuser. And what does that do when you have an upcoming movie that is tying into a fairly popular film, Aquaman? Because Aquaman did very, very well. And now we're going to have Aquaman 2. Which was supposed to come out around Christmas this year, but we have yet to see a trailer yet. And so we've heard so much being talked about during the court case saying that her, and this is not just the court case, but articles. And also, during the last week of the trial, one of the producers on the film Correct. came out, testified that because of her lack of chemistry with Jason Momoa, they had cut her to 10 minutes and are introducing a new character into the movie that had better chemistry with Momoa. And a lot of people were like, oh my God, does that mean she is going to be cut from the movie? Does that... And the challenge is... Does she even deserve to be in the film? At this point, they, if she's only in the film for 10 minutes, like the producer says, may as well just scrub that 10 minutes unless there are plot importance. But even then, if there's plot importance, think about the situation like with Kevin Spacey. They had a movie where they had filmed it completely. And then they just ended up finding a different actor and just and reshot then, the movie in a three-week span to get it out. And they only reshot those pivotal scenes where Spacey was in the movie so that they could make it work. And if they do have another love interest or if they do have anybody else where they could make the scenes work just as well. They may as well at this point since it's going to shoot down a controversy with the movie or just delay it in the next year. Even if it's, you know, it's been delayed twice already. And... Here's the, here's the reason why I mention this, and this is why I'm concerned about Warner Brothers, is let's think about the cost-benefit analysis or your return on investment. Cost-benefit analysis, basically, how much does it cost to do this, and what is the benefit you're going to gain? And there's a reason why we're talking about this, because it's going to come up to the next topic we have exactly. to talk about. So, the cost... Currently, you have the movie as it is, as it stands. You have to factor in the upcoming marketing budget when the push before the movie is released. So let's say the cost is $200 million. I'm probably lowballing because they have to do a lot of media cleanup for this. So I'm lowballing $200 million. The $200 million. Million may just be the film's budget. Then you got to factor in it's probably going to be two to $300 million for the marketing budget. So I'm thinking just $200 million for marketing because the movie already has been made, so it's a sunk cost. Yeah, and uh, whatever CGI they have left to add in. Exactly. So the movie itself is a sunk cost. So marketing is probably going to be about $200 million. And that's worldwide money. So... You spend $200 million, and this is on top of what you spent for the movie itself. Okay. So that means your break-even. Now, if we put the movie and the marketing together, your break-even is probably going to be low-balling $400 million. I'm on so... The high, on the high end, maybe $550 million. Exactly. So if we low-ball, just for easy math, $400 million all together with movie and marketing... That means you have to make $400 million to break even. So that's your benefit. So your cost is $400 million. Your benefit at minimum has to be $400 million. With all the controversy out there, especially with the court of public opinion, these are the people who are going to be seeing the movie. I forecast right now that they're not going to break even. Now, unless they explicitly announce in the marketing they have dumped herd, they're not going to make budget. And the reason I say that is because the movie-going population is not going to go to theaters to see the movie. And, okay, I will... There will be some people who will. The diehard fans will. The diehard fans... And the people who believe Amber Heard. And if you believe Amber Heard, I am not going... My purpose here 
is not to say you're right or wrong. My belief, having been in abusive childhood, having seen a lot of abusive relationships around me where the abuser has been male or female, I can see abusive tendencies in people and I could see it in the court case. You cannot hide abusive tendencies. So my belief is that Amber Heard is guilty. And so, you could tell she's very sociopathic. So in my personal opinion, and this is not Kaiju's as well, I already know what his is and his is actually similar to mine, we don't plan to support the movie, ever. Because as much as it sucks because we wanted to see the second movie, Based on what's going on, I do not feel that I can support the movie. And yes, I'm harming a lot of people's livelihoods. I'm not talking about the actors. I'm talking about the behind the scenes people. But I can't justify it. Yeah, unless they, Warner Brothers actually comes out and has, clearly states, Hurt's been dumped from the movie and we're going to just take the hit and get rid of her. I won't even rent it until I hear that. No. And this is going to kind of lead into our next subject as well. But right now, they're, they're, and return on investment is very similar to a cost-benefit analysis. Return on investment is, once again, how much money you put into it, your return on investment has to be equal, if not more. And with... A $400 million budget, where they would have to really make the money to be able to break even, would be China. Yeah. And because the States is not going to sit for it. And many European nations, because it's everywhere, and knowing how the opinions go, they're not going to go towards this movie unless... It's even like the Morbius thing where it's a complete meme. Where Sony lost money not realizing on that. <laughs> yeah. Now, William Zarkloff, the new CEO of Warner Brothers, has been stating that he's got some cleanup to do. But the next topic, he really hasn't had much to say on that. And because Warner Brothers already has spent $400 making this movie pre-marketing. Oh, for $400 million. Now four hundred dollars. That yeah, would be a cheap yeah. ass movie. Yeah. Four hundred million. And this isn't accounting the upcoming marketing push that this movie's going to have if it even goes to theaters. Because Ezra Miller is shooting himself in the foot, and Warner Brothers just does not know what to do, except for the fact they've actually publicly come out and said after the Flashpoint movie they're cutting Miller free. And before we get too far into it, I will set. Um, I will say a couple of things. Ezra Miller has come out publicly and said that he'll go by they, them, or he, him. So if you hear, I'm just putting it out there because there's been so much fucking controversy yeah, over that. Hawaii police were attempting to arre arrest him in the most recent body cam video. And when they referred to Ezra as he, him, he tried to physically assault one of the officers because they wouldn't use they, them. And he's the one that, as an actor, said he'll go by either. And so Ezra Miller is a very special, special case. So as an actor, honestly, I didn't know about Ezra until the first Fantastic Beast movie. And even then, I didn't understand who the character was supposed to be, because obviously he's American, so he cannot be Voldemort. And he's too old to be Voldemort at the same time, so I never got the point of his character. And his character's development kind of got scrapped in the third Fantastic Beast movie because they decided to not do all six movies at this point because of everything going down with the depth stuff. So Ezra Miller has had a very very toxic relationship they had some issues a few years ago and this was actually before the justice league movie even came out where ezra got in the fight at a bar and physically assaulted the woman and it was recorded so it's not a he said she said or how it was caught want. on cell phone camera it was caught on cell phone and camera. the controversy of this came up when he was initially cast by Zack snyder 
So we have that. Then let's fast forward. We have another two assaults. Another time that Ezra physically assaulted another woman and then he assaulted a couple. So the one challenge I have with Hollywood is they're people. And it's they very obvious because every incident, Ezra's been intoxicated every time. So there is some kind of indication he may have an alcohol problem. And my challenge with Hollywood, when there is an actual assault or violence being taken against a non celebrity or even with a celebrity look at the whole situation of rihanna versus chris brown yeah whatever came up of it because sure she did not press charges but you don't actually always have to press charges for the person get to get arrested and actually tried for it yeah and that chris brown's publicist is probably one of the most stressed out people on the planet oh god so when any celebrity of notes, and you can use this with Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, Johnny, not Johnny Depp, um, Robert Downey Jr., so many, and they will get in trouble, and it'll Charlie be Sheen's publicist, Hugh Grant, so many, they'll get in trouble and it'll be swept under the rug. Like, we'll see publicity about it because everybody has to be in everybody's face. TMZ then, doesn't help. And then it just disappears. Yeah. Into the zeitgeist because you never know what happened. Like, I completely forgot that Paris Hilton had a felony until they did a news article of her trying to go to Japan. And Japan won't let anybody into their country if they have a felony in yeah. another country. Lohan can't travel because of her cocaine uh, arrests. Well, she can't travel to certain countries. Yeah. She can, but so it's like okay, but with Ezra Miller, his their publicist, whomever is in charge of this person, I want them defending me because apparently they can get you out of any trouble. And that doesn't top off the more recent controversies that Ezra Miller has had with three different families filing restraining orders against Edward Miller because of he's had contacts with their daughters. So what has gone on recently, and this makes me physically ill. And this is the main reason why Warner Brothers is deciding to cut Ezra Miller after the Flash movie comes out. And I have a problem with that too. But what's going on with Ezra Miller is he... I'm going to go with he, just because as a person right now, I'm super pissed off. And this is a very male thing to do. Um, Especially considering all three of the victims are young women. Minors, honestly. So with an, a native person, this is the worst of it all. Because it's like a two for one deal. Actually, a three for one deal. It's a deal. three for one. So Ezra Miller met this young person and for the young person I will go by they them because they they deserve respect for being non-binary and this young person she well they they met Ezra Miller when they were 12 and they connected on their thoughts of non-binary of being so different from the community and Ezra started grooming them as of 12 to now fast forward to 18 with drugs and with many other super inappropriate things. And what grooming means, if you're not familiar, is making a person act and feel and do what you believe is correct. Now, grooming itself is very bad. It's not to say that people don't do it in like a non-bad way, because if you think about it with a relationship, you're technically kind of changing your beliefs and your philosophies, not unwilling, but compromising yeah, for your partner. It's the only way to actually have a functional relationship a exactly. lot of the time. So you compromise. 
But grooming means that you're taking someone... That's usually significantly younger than you. And you're making... And you're... You're telling them everything of, like, what is wrong. You're, you're grooming. And some people actually have a mentality where they can do it unconsciously. Which I kind of feel like Ezra Miller is that type of person. But for this young person, Ezra was grooming this young girl. I'm going to say girl because it's simplistic of saying it. From the age of 12 to 18. And now we've recently had reports of two others from families that have come out and put restraining orders on Ezra Miller. And one of them apparently is still a minor. Well, and what's worse about this particular situation is grooming is bad enough. Grooming a minor is a terrible thing because that's what a lot of human traffickers do. They will groom you into being what you want them to be. And Tokata, who is now 18, so of legal age in the United States, being groomed for so long, we don't know if it was willing or unwilling because of how many drugs they ingested, but they're both gone. They're both in the wind. And what makes it worse is that they, the parents for Takata had to fight the court to say, well, yes, their daughter is now of legal age. It's now a legal age because of everything that has happened does not connect with that legal age because of the grooming. So they were able to find a loophole, which is hard for anyone, but especially for Native Americans. For the Native peoples, they always and we talk about race and race is an issue all over but you're of native heritage and it's hard because there's so many stigmas that's why i don't really publicly talk about it and the only people people think i'm more of my romani heritage than of my native heritage and so they had to fight to still get a restraining order, which obviously doesn't work because Takata's missing. But th because of that, they were able to proceed forward with kidnapping charges. So it's a felony. It's and a huge felony. Top this off while this whole thing's going on, Ezra Miller decided to mock the Hawaii Police Department on Instagram. Well, all the police, because it's, I don't get it. And so we have multiple people, children. I'm just going to call them children. Because yeah, because there's two others at this point. The one that we publicly know about and the other two we don't know about because they're not of 18 yet. What's going on with them? Well, those? exactly. So you have Ezra Miller, long story short, being very violent and now grooming other people. And then Warner Brothers' response to this is basically we're dumping Ezra Miller but because we sunk $400 million on the budget of this film, we still have to release it in some capacity because this is the return of Michael Keaton to Warner Brothers. But here's the problem. And this is how I look at it. Because they, no matter what they do, they're going to hemorrhage money. Yeah, they're going to hemorrhage money on both of these films no matter what. But especially with The Flash, you're going to surely hemorrhage money because if you release the movie as is with Ezra Miller, you're going to have pedophiles, not pedophiles literally, but you're going to have, you're not going to have good people watch this movie. You're no. going to have people who believe that Ezra Miller is a saint. Also on top of this, and I'm agreeing with a lot of the social media on this, just take Grant Gustin. Have him reshoot the scenes with Grant Gustin. That's, that's exactly what so many people, that's what Kaiju has been saying, is you have a perfect Flash character. Yes, he was in the television universe, but Grant Gustin... And it's Flashpoint. 
it can be explained. Exactly. Now, will they waste money doing that? Yes. But... At this point, you've already have a $400 million sinking ship. Why not just take another $50, $60 million and do the reshoots? And so when even when we were talking about Amber Heard, but even with here, it's hard for anybody like a production company to say publicly... Because even if you think about it, nobody has said it publicly from a production company about Kevin Spacey either. Yeah, they basically, yeah. once Spacey's stuff came out, they all went tight-lipped and he just got blacklisted. Exactly. So they won't necessarily ever say about either of these people that what they did was wrong, that they should never be used again. But I, I'm frustrated because... I think they need to do exactly that. Take the scenes with Ezra Miller because most of them were in front of a green screen anyways. And... Because that's what Zack Snyder did in his zombie film on Netflix. Oh, I watched it yeah. too. It's a great movie. They ended up having to cut one of the actors out because they had a very horrific um, story come out about them and how he was abusing women. Zack Snyder cast a woman to replace him and they just reshot the screen scenes in front of a green screen and used her character to interact with those. And it felt natural the way he did it. Warner Brothers could do the same thing. It's so it's not impossible there. So that's one avenue to fix it. The other avenue to fix the other avenue, which I know would really suck. And it's a shit situation, but think about how much money they're going to lose in the end. Just don't release it. If, because if you put it, if they put it on HBO Max, yes, people will watch it because it's on HBO Max, but is that really making you money? Because yes, you're getting the monthly subscription cost, but you're not going to get new subscribers, Plus, you might lose subscribers doing that. I was going to say, you'll actually lose subscribers because people will be like, oh, you're just trying to make a quick buck and I can't support a business that's willing to profit off of somebody who does terrible things. Yeah, at this point, Warner Brothers has to just take their $400 million loss. And yes, it sucks. But think about it with all the years on COVID, with how much of a loss so many companies made. Yeah, Zarlov's already decided to cut, because he decided to end Fantastic Beasts for three, he's cut two DC Extended Universe movies that were in the works for HBO Max, and went, no, we're not making those. He's making tough calls, but this is going to be his toughest call of them all. And I honestly, if I was in his situation, I would be cringing as I say this, I'd be like, we have one of two options. Replace Ezra Miller within movie with another actor and just reshoot because they did it with Justice League. That's why you have that stupid mustache gate yeah. for Hen um, Henry Cavill. So obviously you've done it. So either recast and reshoot or eat the cost, and pray your next damn movie is going to make up for it. Yeah, especially with the excitement surrounding Black Adam, which we know is coming in October. you got to hope Rock can sustain that movie and, so, not, and not get swept up in the controversy because of your other two. So that would be my if-and situation. Now, I do want to add to this one comment that I saw online that was a comment that Kaiju had with somebody on Twitter. So one person said, well, this is similar to the situation with Robert Downey Jr. How? So if you don't know about Robert Downey Jr. We know he had drug problems in the 90s. Pre-Iron um, Man. 
he had a lot of drug problems. You could actually see it in many of his films. He got fired from Alec McBeal because that, and that's where Robert Downey Jr. decided to clean up. It was well, after that firing. Helped. But if you ever want to actually, it's a funny, funny ass movie. So, but if you ever want to see a movie where you can see how high he is from start to finish, it's a movie called Soap Dish with yep. Sally Field. And you could tell he's coped up that entire movie. Oh, God. And Whoopi Goldberg, you could tell she was not sober either. But anyways, um, it's a hilarious movie, but you can clearly see how drugged up he you is. You can clearly see half the cast is doped up on coke during that movie. So, Robert Downey Jr. had many years of drugs. And he, he actually had to take a step back for a little bit. He did stuff. Like, one of my favorite movies of him is actually Zodiac with Mark Ruffalo because they both did a fantastic job. But... And that's where he was getting into his I just got out of rehab phase. And so when he got cast as, as Iron Man, I was kind of surprised, but at the same time knowing who Tony Stark was, I was like, oh, it's not that much of a stretch. But when people compared Robert Downey Jr. to Ezra Miller saying, well, Robert Downey Jr. was able to salvage his career. Robert Downey Jr. didn't kidnap a girl, a person, after grooming them for a number of years. He did not assault people multiple times. Yes, he got into car accidents, he did stupid ass shit, but... He, uh, he had several DUIs. But we were looking at, like, Johnny Depp. We knew he had the drug and alcohol well, I problems. Well, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. So, you can't compare apples to oranges there. They're two different people. And now, if Ezra Miller were to turn himself in, give penance, get help, because it is a mental illness of what he's doing, is a narcissistic issue that causes people to become groomers. I'm not saying he should be touted as a hero, but if he stepped away from Hollywood for a few years... Got his life cleaned up. There is a possibility that he wouldn't be welcomed back with open arms, but he's not even 30 yet. And to be doing all of the crazy ass shit is just stupid. Yeah. And Amber Heard's killed her career. Oh, yeah. There's no We're, doubt. There's no way she's coming back. But Ezra, if he could get help, would have a slight, slight shot. But at this point, it's looking like he doesn't care. And so, at the end of it all, just starting back from where at the beginning, Warner Brothers needs help. They need people, and not... I think that's why they have their new CEO, because it was halfway in during the Hertz stuff coming out that they got their new CEO on the board of directors. But I really, truly think they need... They need... They also need support from the public and the community in not a toxic way. But to say that if you do not make a decision on either or both of these movies, we're not supporting it. I think if everybody used their voice and say, I am not supporting this film, if I, if, if Amber Heard's in Aquaman and Ezra Miller's in Flash, I think you need to use your power of your voice, like I said, not in a toxic manner, but saying, I will not support this movie. Exactly, and I hate to say it, but as much as I'm excited for Black Adam, that's going to be the show of the fans if they actually are going to be supporting Warner Brothers since it's coming out before the other two now. And that is the other challenge, is people are going to be very hesitant to support an organization that does not act. And the third Fantastic Beast movie barely made its budget back because of the controversy. I'm surprised it even made its budget back. But that's kind of all I have. Anything on you? I pretty much hit a lot of the same points too and we just gotta see because Warner Brothers is 
pretty much a sinking ship and you knew it was happening when they ended up putting in a new CEO at the halfway point of all this stuff going down. But we shall see what they plan to do and hopefully they make a smart decision. Yeah, and hopefully the public decides not to have that short-term memory like a goldfish they sometimes do. I think with it being in the news every day, it's not going to go away. But that is a fear. And we all just need to stick to our beliefs. Because we know movie companies, they'll push the movies farther and farther away to stir away from the controversy just to get mm -hmm. their money back. Oh, yeah. Which, that would be foolish as well. But that's all we have, and we will be back next time. Bye!